So something gives me the feeling that this is probably going to be one of my more controversial videos. So recently, I've noticed that there's a sort of growing anti-system D sentiment that's more and more entering the mainstream Linux community. Now, for those who don't know, system D is the most frequently used init system on Linux. Now, for those who don't know what an init system is, it's effectively the first process that started after the kernel loads, and effectively its purpose is to start all of the necessary services to make the operating system work, among numerous other things. Now, a lot of people don't like system D, and there are many reasons for that. Many of those reasons that people don't like systemd are technical, but I feel like for the average user that's probably not going to matter. Most average users aren't going to notice that they're using systemd or any other init system for that matter. So instead of going through the technical reasons you might not want to use systemd, I'm going to talk about an ethical reason you might not want to use it. In today's video we're going to be talking about how systemd is a little bit of a monopoly. Right now on the Linux Lounge. Now, before I start the video, I'm going to have to say I have absolutely no issue with systemd, its developers, or the people who use it. I actually very frequently use systemd on various devices, and I used it for most of my Linux journey. And although I think systemd has become a bit of a monopoly, I doubt it was done intentionally on the part of the developers, and I especially doubt they did it for any malicious reasons. And certainly it's nothing like the monopoly that Microsoft has with Windows or anything like that. But with that said, let's get into the first reason why I think systemd is somewhat monopolistic. The first reason that systemd is quite monopolistic is that it is very difficult to escape. Only a very small number of distributions offer the option to use them without systemd, and most of the ones that do aren't particularly mainstream. Now, you might think that that's totally fine and you can just replace systemd after install, but since it's such an integral part of the system, most distributions will just refuse to boot without systemd. So more often than not, if you want to use a Linux distribution without systemd, you have to use a semi-obscure fork of an existing distribution. For example, if you want to use Arch without systemd, you have to use Artix. And if you want to use Debian without systemd, you have to use Devon, which for some people is going to be less than ideal. For instance, it's probably going to be harder to find support if you're using one of these distributions, although granted Arctix does seem to have a fairly active community. This reliance on systemd excludes you from using a lot of other distributions too, as some of the best distributions out there are systemd only. All of this means that if you for some reason don't like systemd, it's incredibly difficult to get away from it. Now, I don't blame anyone in particular for this issue, issue. It's not the systemd developer's fault, and it's not the distribution developer's fault. I understand that it's probably really difficult to maintain a distribution for two or more init systems, but that doesn't make this any less of a problem, and I think the solution is for people to make forks of more distributions that don't include systemd, but also for distribution maintainers to start seeking out people to produce a systemd free version of their distribution. It may also be a good idea for distributions to follow in the foot steps of distributions like Void Linux and maybe start looking into making their distribution different from all other distributions by using a different init system by default. But with that said, let's assume that you install one of the many excellent systemd free Linux distributions. Surely then you'll be free of the monopoly of systemd. Well, directly yes, but there are lots of indirect effects from systemd's monopoly. For instance, systemd has kind of become the default on Linux, so therefore lots of scripts, programs, and daemons depend on systemd, and lots of guides assume that you're going to be using it. Now, I don't use systemd on my main PC, and so far I haven't come across a program that I want Want to use that depends on systemd. However, lots of programs do depend on systemd. In fact, one of the most widely used desktop environments, GNOME, depends on systemd for a lot of things. Now, you might argue that because most people who use Linux use systemd, that this isn't a problem. But Linux is about choice, and it's never a good thing to lock people out of using something because they don't use one specific init system. And it's also important to keep in mind that not everyone uses Linux, which is one of the many problems that I have with systemd. It's very Linux specific. 
So unlike other init systems, it won't run on platforms like BSD, which means that if a program depends on systemd, it's incredibly difficult to get it to run on BSD or other similar systems. For instance, for the longest time, FreeBSD only had an old version of the GNOME desktop, because getting it to run on the platform was incredibly difficult and required the developers to pry GNOME away from its systemd dependencies. And even when they were able to do this and update GNOME on FreeBSD, there were still lots of missing features from GNOME, because, well, GNOME is just so dependent on systemd and BSD doesn't have systemd. Even outside of BSD, as we discussed, there are people in the Linux world that just don't want to use systemd, and those people are greeted with a necessity to use a variety of programs that are forked to remove their systemd dependencies, as well as a variety of programs that just plain don't work. So, in conclusion, I think that systemd, most likely unintentionally, has become a bit of a monopoly that is quite often difficult to get away from. Many distributions and programs simply will not work without systemd, and most distribution maintainers don't maintain an alternative. Now, I don't see systemd in of itself as a problem. On its own, it's a fine piece of software, and although it strays from the Unix philosophy by trying to accomplish more than it's reasonably supposed to, I don't think it's bad on a technical level, and I'm sure it's probably very convenient, but this monopoly is incredibly frustrating and has to go. So I'm going to end this video on a bit of a call to action. Try to use a Linux distribution that doesn't include systemd and see how you get on. If you're an advanced user, you probably won't notice the absence of systemd. In fact, I had less problems using Debian without systemd than with systemd. Additionally, if you're a developer, consider forking a distribution to remove systemd, and by extension, create more distributions that people who don't like systemd can use. In conclusion, I think the strength of Linux is choice, but I think that if systemd were to coexist alongside other init systems, thereby giving the user more choice, that would be much, much better for our community.